I want to teach you how to sell so good, people will literally pull out their wallets and say, take my money. But before I give that method to you, you must make one promise to me that you will only use this method for good. I will not manipulate. If you can't promise that, aka you're a sociopath, do not watch this video. I'm willing to bet at some point in your life you've had to sell something. Maybe this is a physical product. Maybe it's yourself during a job interview. Maybe it's persuasive speaking and you're selling your ideas. What would it look like if you had a formula, sort of a master key in your back pocket that you could pull out, put in the lock, and it would work every time. I want to teach you that simple four-part formula in this video that's going to work next time you have a sales pitch, an interview. In fact, what you've been watching for the past minute or so has been that very formula that I'm going to teach you. If you're still watching and I have your attention, proves it works. Last thing, credit where credit is due. This is a concept I picked up from Mike Del Ponte on the Social Triggers podcast. All right, now let's jump into these four Ps on how to convince anyone how to buy what you sell. The first one is promise. You know, advertisers who spend millions of dollars on a simple 60 second commercial say that if they can't hook someone within that first five seconds, they might as well have not even filmed the next 55. Movies, the opening scene directors stress about for months on end getting right because they know that sets the tone for everything else they're about to do. Well, with you, whatever you're selling, again, job interview, physical product, ideas, set the tone with that first one sentence. This is called the promise. It's a short, punchy little one-liner. My example in this video. Today I'm gonna teach you how to sell something so good people will pull out their wallets and say, take my money. That sets the tone for what's about to come. You know it's about selling. You know what this video is about. Once you do that, you move into the next P. The next P is the picture. Mike Rowe, the guy from Dirty Jobs, he told a great story on the Tim Ferriss podcast on how he got into television. He went on a bet with his friend to an audition to sell for QVC. You know, the late night infomercials where they're trying to get you to buy jewelry that no one needs and no one would actually wear. He was that guy selling at two or three in the morning. So he walks into this job interview again on a bet. His friend said, if you do it, I'll do it. And they didn't ask him about his background, experience. They just held up a pen and said, sell this to me. What Mike Rowe did in that moment got him the job. He didn't talk about the pen and say, well, it's got a fine ball tip to it. Um, it doesn't smudge when you write. He went after the emotions. He said, I want you to imagine you just closed a business deal. Everything went as planned. It took you two months. You're ready to sign. You reach into your pocket and you pull out a ball tip pen that's chewed on and cost you four cents. What impression does that leave on the person? What does that say about who you are? What does that convey about your future business deal? Now I want you to picture the other hand, you have this pen that's perfectly designed, German engineered, writes like a feather, and you give that to them to seal the deal. See what Mike did that got him the job on QVC, he didn't go after the features of the pen. He went after the emotional side. He put the picture in their mind of using that pen, and that's how it sold them, leading him to get the job on QVC. You might be asking, Clark, isn't selling logical? Wouldn't you want to convince someone on the reasons they should buy your deal? It's a better deal than the competitors? No. You don't want to do that. We actually buy with our emotions, human beings, and then we justify with logic. So if you really want to convince someone, go after the emotional side of them. My example in this video, I said, look, if you're watching this video, I'm willing to bet you've had to fill in the blank, a job interview, sell something in person, convince people of your ideas. Okay, so you see I'm planning the picture in your mind of a time where you had to actually sell something to relate to your emotional side to make you watch this more. The next P is proof. I heard a great story. I think it's Andrew Stone from Pixar was giving in his TED Talk. He said he had a graphics arts teacher early on in his college career. The first day of class, he storms in, he writes on the board, apple, and then he draws a picture of an apple. He says, this is the number one rule of graphic design. Don't do this. And he had the two sitting there. And then he took a piece of paper and he covered the apple. He said, do this, but don't do this both together. In other words, he said, look, show me, don't tell me. 
the proof, you know, we can get up and talk about how great our company is or how great we are as entrepreneurs or how great we are in a job interview. We can tell all we want, but people really want the specific examples, the stories, the emotional side, again, of times where you've made that happen. Show them, don't tell them. The last P in this, this is your pitch. Now, this is where a majority of people who get that mindset that, okay, I'm going to sell something, they focus 90% of their time on this component, and they miss those first three. What's the problem? If you don't master those first three right there, This doesn't even matter. In other words, if you have a video where you lose people in that first five seconds, like the TV commercials we spoke about, why even film the next 55? Let's just say you did all those, you get to this one, the pitch. What do you do? I'm not going to spend time here going over the seven psychological triggers of why we buy, you know, with scarcity, social proof, credibility, all those things that we generally hear about when we're selling something. You can research those and you probably know a lot of them already. What I want to say here is just my biggest tip. There's the notorious jam study where they have jams in supermarkets and they presented people with 34 jams. What they noticed is that more people stopped, but less people buyed. And that when they only had a setup display of four to eight jams, the conversions went through the roof. In other words, when we're overwhelmed with the decisions, we don't do anything. What I found most effective is a single call to action. When you do a pitch, don't give them 20 things to act on. Don't give them five things to act on. Give them one thing you want them to do at the end of your video, at the end of your article, in your social media post. Have one call to action, maybe two, that's pushing it, that you want them to do at the end of whatever you're selling, and that's a better way to convert people.